What is the nature of fulfillment? Personally, I believe it is a sense of completeness and inner tranquility that comes from performing at a task that not only improves your own life, but also improves the lives of others. As entrepreneur Tom Bilyeu would put it, fulfillment is how you feel about yourself when you are by yourself. He says that happiness is fleeting. It can be here one moment and gone the next. Fulfillment, on the other hand, is something that stays even when you're in the midst of your darkest days. These are the words that came to me when I watched an episode of Netflix's Love, Death and Robots. It's an anthology show with each episode being a completely self-contained sci-fi short story. One episode in particular, the episode we'll be discussing in today's short video, really caught my attention and inspired me to make this video. That episode is a story titled Zima Blue. But what is Zima Blue and what is it about? Well, I suppose the right question to ask would be, actually, who is Zima Blue? Zima Blue is a galaxy-renowned artist widely considered to be the most significant painter of their time. We're introduced to Zima through the eyes of Claire, an intrepid reporter and art critic. You see, for decades, Zima had refused any interview with the press and lived as a recluse in his isolated sanctuary. But something changed. For the first time in forever, Zima not only wanted to talk to the press, but he actively invited Claire to his sanctuary in order for her to get the exclusive insight into his life and past. This shut-in of a master artist was now actively seeking out someone to talk to about his life. Claire thinks over Zima's past on her way there, and we, the viewer, are filled in on his life. He started as a simple artist, doing portraits, but eventually felt that the human form did not provide enough freedom for his artistic desires. He started painting the galaxy and the wonders of space in exquisite detail. It was in this period that he truly began his rise to fame. Then one day, during the unveiling of another one of his works of art, something changed. On the canvas, right in the middle of the painting, was a small blue square. It seemed odd, but artists often do things like this, so it wasn't too uncommon. Then, however, the square was added to every new work he did. Each time it got bigger and bigger than before, consuming more and more of the painting behind it. Sometimes it was a different shape, but it was always that same shade of blue. Eventually, Zima unveiled a painting that was nothing other than a large blue canvas. There wasn't a painting behind it, it was just a single shade of blue on canvas. The people thought that surely he couldn't go further from there. The blue had consumed everything, so this was as far as his eccentricities could allow, right? Wrong. He started unveiling larger and larger murals. Murals that stretched into the sky and dominated the horizon. Murals that seemed impossibly large and consumed all that stood behind it. And each mural was nothing other than that single pale blue. Zima blue. Now familiar with his legacy, Claire goes on to explain his past. He had gone to the shady underground of cybernetic implants and body modifications. Slowly, over time, Zima replaced every part of his organic body. He could now withstand the environment on any planet and even the cold vacuum of space. He was a man-turned-machine, and his travels allowed him to see all the different parts of the galaxy. And now, this master artist, this man-turned-machine, wanted to reveal something to the world, and he wanted Claire to be the first to know. At her arrival, Zima explained to Claire that he had been seeking truth. All of his travels and his expression through art had been in an effort to seek truth. He does not say what truth he is seeking, only that he found it and now wants to share it. He reveals to Claire his next and final work of art as it's being constructed. It's an outdoor pool that he had dug up and was busy restoring. Notably, the pool is ringed on the inside with a layer of blue tiles the same shade as his paintings. Claire, understandably, is quite confused by this. That is when Zima explains the story behind the pool and his own journey. The pool was once the pool of a young woman, an inventor with a passion for practical robotics. She tinkered and toiled and built many small robots that would perform chores around her house. 
One robot in particular, however, was her favorite. It was a small robot that cleaned her pool. She implanted a chip into it that let it process color so that it could ensure the pool was properly clean. Over time, however, she kept tinkering on it and adding to it. Eventually, it could do a lot more than just clean the pool and was helping her out around the house. That young woman eventually passed away and the robot was handed down to other family members. Over the generations, more and more modifications were added to the robot, allowing it to do more and more things for its owners. That little robot, over time, eventually became the man Claire now spoke to. Zima wasn't a man turned machine. He was a machine turned man, and he would reveal that to the world in the most dramatic way. When the people gathered to see his last work of art, he revealed the truth to them. He dove into the pool, shut down his higher processes, and dismantled his body until nothing was left but a small robot programmed to clean the pool. Coming full circle, the reclusive artist that started as a pool cleaning drone now went back to being a pool cleaning drone, and in doing so, he discovered the truth he was seeking. The truth of what was truly good in life. The truth of what brought one true satisfaction. It was the satisfaction of a job well done. In searching for truth, we must first ask ourselves, what is truth? What is it we're actually searching for? The story of Zima Blue, in my opinion, gives us a glimpse into the truth that many wrestle with for their entire lives. It is the truth of what makes a good life, the truth of what makes life worth living, and as Zima put it, the truth of the satisfaction brought on by a job well done. It seems a bit simplistic, I will admit, so allow me to elaborate. I mentioned the entrepreneur Tom Bilyeu earlier in the video. Tom says that the game you're playing, the game we're all playing in life, is not one of happiness or money or status or achievement. The game we're all playing is a game of neurochemistry. It's all about how you feel about yourself when you're by yourself. Now, you might think it's easy for him to say that since he's rich, but you'd be wrong. He's a man who once willingly gave up millions because he was profoundly unhappy in the company he was working at. He spent years chasing money and gave it up because it did nothing to improve how he felt about himself. And even I could write that off as a once-off thing, but it takes only a brief Google search to find a list of millionaires and celebrities who committed suicide. On top of this, I also had a brief encounter with something similar. I'd also been chasing money for a while and there was a time where I made a substantial increase in my monthly earnings. It was nothing fancy, but it was a definite and noticeable improvement. And it did absolutely nothing to my mindset. I didn't feel any better and I didn't find life any more enjoyable. In fact, I kind of felt deflated and unhappy because I expected the money to make things so much better. And it ended up doing nothing of the sort. The letdown was such a radically different feeling from what I expected that it completely derailed me and made me want to quit entirely. It literally took me over a year to readjust my mindset and get myself back on track. This was what taught me to never chase money if my goal was to feel fulfilled. Don't get me wrong though, money solves many problems and is one of the most useful tools in the world. But money solves money problems. Even if all your money problems were solved, it doesn't mean you'd feel any better about yourself. You'd be richer, sure, but you'd be a richer version of your current self with all the same negative thoughts and stresses you already have. What truly makes a difference in life is not money or even happiness. It's fulfillment, true fulfillment that comes from developing a set of skills that serve not only yourself, but other people. Humans are social animals. We live for the betterment of the group. Oh sure, we can be very individualistic, but we're also very relationship oriented. We're genetically wired to feel good about serving the people in our tribe. This is why it's important to serve others and not just yourself. You can just focus on serving yourself, but ultimately you'll run the risk of being one of those suicidal millionaires. I cannot overstate this enough. It's a part of your hardwired genetic makeup that has been evolved over millions of years for you to feel good about helping others. Now, some people may be more sensitive to that feeling than others, for example, charity workers, nurses, etc. But ultimately, 
if you can find something you enjoy doing that also helps improve the lives of other people in some way, then you'll find true fulfillment. You need to find something that you'll love doing even when you fail at it. Sometimes you already have something like that, other times you'll have to build something that fans the flames of your passion. But if you truly wish to feel good about yourself, your focus needs to be on fulfillment. And yes, I meant to say build. Some people are lucky and stumble upon a passion. The majority of us, however, must build our passion. We must find something we enjoy, then literally hype ourselves up about it over and over again to turn that enjoyment into true passion. Think about how a fighter hypes themselves up before a match. You must do the same thing about your passion and find a way to link it to helping others. It will feel weird at first, and it will definitely feel fake. But over time your brain will begin to adapt. You will eventually genuinely feel that hype whenever you think or talk about your passion. And when you can get to the point where working on a set of skills to serve not only yourself but other people as well gets you fired up, that's when you know you've gotten there. That's when you know you've pushed your mindset to the point where you can actually succeed. If you can get to the point where you're happy doing something even if you're failing, then you know you're on the right track. Remember that the struggle is guaranteed, but the success is not. I'll say it again, the struggle is guaranteed, but the success is absolutely not. So find something that you can enjoy even in the struggle. This is the truth you must seek. This is the satisfaction of a job well done that you must find. Zima shows us his journey in a remarkable detail for such a short story. He was a man who traveled the galaxy, honed a skill and gained incredible amounts of fame and renown. Despite all the accolades, he sought only one thing. Satisfaction in doing something well. He undid his body and reverted his mind back to that of a small simplistic robot, effectively killing a part of himself. And he did this all because he remembers his days as a pool cleaning robot and he realized that he was more content and more fulfilled back then than he is with all the riches and status. It's an exaggerated and kind of silly story, yes, but it definitely helps to illustrate the point. Now, I'm not saying you should do something so drastic and I'm definitely not saying you shouldn't seek a way to improve your financial situation. What I'm saying, however, is that you'll never find tranquility and true fulfillment until you do something purely for the emotional high it brings you when you help others or improve their lives in some way. I personally have found something that I can do even if I'm failing. For me, writing stories and making videos is what brings me fulfillment. Even if I don't become successful, I find immense purpose and joy in entertaining people, discussing deep topics and telling thought-provoking stories. I want to serve through story and philosophy, and even if I fail, I'll always look for ways to do so. If I end up finding that this is a path that doesn't solve my financial issues, I'll go and learn to code or something and still keep doing this, because this is what I want to devote my life to. I want to build a body of work that inspired people, made them think, made them question, made them laugh, cry and jump for joy. And you can't really put a price on that, at least not for me. So, knowing this feeling, I implore each and every one of you, go out and look for something that helps you serve others in some way. Go and build your passion. Go and find fulfillment. Go discover truth for yourself. Go and find satisfaction in a job well done. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking the video since that's the most important metric YouTube uses to gauge whether or not to recommend the video. And if you'd like to see more, consider hitting that subscribe button. Anyway, thank you for your time, take care, and we'll talk again very soon.